Sea of Thieves has changed a lot since it first launched more than three years ago, and getting started can be difficult without a compass pointing you in the right direction. Fortunately, we're here to be your North Star, and have put together a list of 15 tips for anyone setting sail for the first time, or those of you just getting back on board. If you're just starting out, you've got some tutorials to go through after character customization. Don't sweat too much over this though, as you can completely change your look with the Pirate Appearance Potion at any time for about $2, and upon completing your maiden voyage, you're free to do anything you want. Regardless of whether you're just starting out or reacclimating yourself with buckling swashes, the best place to start out is actually with the new, free, Pirate's Life campaign. Regardless of your opinion on Disney's Pirates movies, this crossover campaign is a great way for new and returning players to get their bearings with the controls and mechanics. It's a set of five story missions that you can jump into right from the launch menu, or by talking to the castaway at her tent on the beach on any outpost island, and these tall tales let you focus on playing the game by yourself, learning how to attack NPC enemies, how to sail your ship, how to attack enemy ships, and more, all without having to worry about being attacked by other players. Once you've completed those stories missions and earned yourself the many possible rewards for doing so, like new cosmetics and gold, it's time to really weigh anchor and start building your pirate legend. And there's a lot to keep track of there. First off, provisions. Food is how you heal in Sea of Thieves, and your ship will always start stocked with a few bananas below deck. You can scrounge up some more fruits from barrels on islands and outposts, or go hunting or fishing for something more substantial. Cooked meats, like pork or fish, heal the most, and fruits generally heal a little less than meat. Raw meat heals the least and causes your pirate to literally vomit. So it's best to avoid that whenever possible. Don't worry about hoarding food though. Your inventory is reset every session, meaning any food, quests, treasure, that isn't gold, and other supplies are all deleted when you stop playing. The only things that carry over from session to session really are your cosmetics, reputation, and experience. Even your location when you end a session is reset upon starting a new one. It might seem frustrating, but at least it puts everyone on an even playing field. And on that note, we should mention that every single player in the game has the same amount of health no matter what level they are. Leveling up your pirate doesn't change your total health, nor does it change the power of your attack or how powerful or effective your weapons are. Sea of Thieves remains an even experience across the board in that regard. When a player bests another player, it's strictly thanks to superior skills or simply a bigger crew, not because they had stronger attacks or more health. However, if you see someone using the Pirate Legend title or flying the purple Athena's fortune flag that features a teal skull in the middle of it, they're not someone to be trifled with. Becoming a Pirate Legend of Sea of Thieves takes a lot of time, and there's a good chance that in that time, they learn how to be one of the best pirates on the sea. Once you're ready to sail, the thing that's going to be on your mind is probably the same thing on every pirate's mind. Gold. The best way to make gold in Sea of Thieves is by completing voyages and tall tales. Voyages can be picked up from any of the trading company representatives whose companies actually offer voyages scattered about any outpost in the game. In terms of trading companies, there's the Gold Hoarders, who will send you on voyages to collect treasures, the Order of Souls, who will task you with defeating skeleton captains and enemies in order to obtain bounty skulls, the Merchant Alliance, who will ask you to transport cargoes such as chickens from one place to another, and more, like Athena's Fortune, the Hunter's Call, the Bilge Rats, Sea Dogs, and Reaper's Bones. Completing voyages for individual trading companies not only gets you gold, but it also increases your reputation with that trading company. As your reputation rises, be sure to purchase additional promotions within that trading company, which open up more lucrative voyages that will see you finding rarer treasures worth more gold. You can also turn in random items you find while sailing around too. Treasure chests, supply crates, and bounty skulls should go to their respective factions, but items like mermaid gems can be sold to anyone, and they're a great way to increase your reputation with the company you voyage for less frequently. If you're looking for something a little more story focused, Tall Tales are your best friend. Not only are they fun adventures, they're a great way to earn money, especially when you pick up some voyages to complete along the way, and unlock some unique cosmetics too. You should also keep an eye on the sea and the sky. World events in Sea of Thieves, usually marked by a special and eye-catching symbol in the sky, can be pretty lucrative. For example, if you see a cloud shaped like a skull with glowing red eyes, that marks a Fort of Fortune, where you'll have to defeat 18 waves of enemies on an island beneath the skull cloud. It's a lot, but the prize is a Fort of Fortune key that opens up the fort's vault, which is filled with treasure. Whether conquering forts or exploring sunken wrecks, there are all manner of enemies looking to put you on the pointy end of their sword. Basic skeletons go down pretty easily, after just two or three hits, though you'll want to avoid being surrounded. You should keep an eye out for special enemies too, like sirens, aka merfolk, who patrol underwater around valuable treasure, or these skeletons coated in gold that take a lot more damage than usual, unless you hit them with a firebomb of course. There's bigger beasts prowling the seas as well. 
If you're sailing the ocean and see the water turn dark or black, prepare for a Kraken attack. It's possible to survive these alone, but it's not easy. At all. Shoot its tentacles with whatever cannons and guns you have. Be sure to equip an Eye of Reach for easy and accurate shots, and keep restocking at the ammo box below deck. And be sure to avoid its direct attacks on your ship, of course. Oh, and don't bother trying to run. Once the Kraken has you surrounded, there's no sailing out of it. The Megalodon, however, is a sea monster you can escape from. If you want to fight it, fire at it with whatever you've got and keep doing that until it goes down. It's not an easy fight though, and running to protect the treasure you have on board is respectable. Your best chance of escape is sailing with the wind to the closest island. Once you're close enough to an island, the Megalodon will go its own way. Of course, the most dangerous foes on the high seas are other players. If you're sailing alone and come under fire from another ship, your best bet is to try and sail away in most cases. Manning a ship alone can be difficult, especially if you're a newcomer, and it's next to impossible to both keep your ship afloat and sink your attackers by yourself. However, if you're sailing a fully manned ship, who's to say you can't be the scourge of the seas? It's the Sea of Thieves, after all, not the Sea of Best Friends. If you see another crew of players and think they might have treasure aboard, make like a pirate, sink that ship, and take their treasure. And there are a few tricks to keep in mind when duking it out with another ship. First, cannonballs and firebombs are better for attacking a ship's hull, which is what makes it actually sink, while chain shot is better for damaging the masts, capstan, and wheel, and hindering its overall function. Damaging a ship's wheel, for example, makes turning the ship slower, and that can easily change the tide of a battle. You can also find special cannonballs in random barrels or on skeleton ships, albeit rarely, like the anchor ball, which immediately lowers a ship's anchor, or the peace ball, which temporarily disables a ship's cannons. These are pretty rare though, so if you find one, make sure to load it only when you're basically guaranteed a hit. So now you're ready to go full master and commander on other crews. Maybe just leave the solo players alone. Pirates have to have a code after all. Hopefully this has you a bit more comfortable behind the wheel of your pirate ship. Be sure to check out our full Sea of Thieves guide for more tips and tricks, detailed walkthroughs, answers to all your questions, and more. And for all your other swashbuckling needs, you're already in the right place. IGN. The Sea of Thieves, eh? Bring me that horizon.